Hello guys, welcome to my next Monday Bible. Uh, my guest today is Stanisław Ivanov. He's a professor and deputy rector at Varna University of Management. He is also a director of Zangador Research Institute and the founder and editor-in-chief of Robonomics, the Journal of Automated Economy. Uh, Stanisław, it's great you could join me. Thank you. Uh, you're a professor in tourism economics. I discuss with my guests AI and law, but I see a great parallel between uh, legal business and tourism. These are two branches of uh, business where people are involved, where automation is involved, but where are also companies that don't want to see any development. Uh, uh, how do you see uh, technology, AI and robotics reshaping uh, uh, the landscape of tourism, probably law and, and the, the whole legal landscape? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is a great question. Tourism is uh, often perceived as uh, people's business, where uh, human employees serve human tourists. Uh, however, what we see in recent years is a significant demographic crisis in Europe and uh, many in, uh, in the Far East, and, uh, the, and the tourism industry is becoming, uh, unfortunately, a little bit less attractive uh, to work in. And the COVID pandemic also contributed significantly to, uh, to this situation. In tourism, we have uh, uh, long working hours, we have uh, night shifts, and mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, salaries cannot compete with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the most uh, highest paying uh, industries. Uh, that's why uh, there's a significant labor shortages in tourism. This means that tourist companies are forced to automate many of the tasks in, uh, their, in their operations in order to decrease their dependence on uh, human labor. We're talking about uh, the use of robots, for example, for provision of information, for room service delivery, for cleaning, for disinfection of premises, uh, we, uh, but besides robots, uh, companies also use chatbots, for example, to communicate with guests uh, as uh, digital concierges, or uh, they're using kiosks for provision of information, for check-in, check-out, etc. Uh, all these things, uh, um, all these technologies, uh, um, they are uh, automating different tasks within uh, companies. And uh, in the long term, my personal view is that uh, this process will continue and will uh, even deepen. Uh, at one point, we will, we will see that uh, there will be many tourist companies that automate, if not all, at least most of uh, the operations in them. Um, this raises different questions, not only from economic point of view, but also from legal perspective. Because uh, currently, um, the, in, the implementation of uh, all these automation technologies is not quite well uh, regulated. These technologies, they collect a lot of data. Here we are talking about, uh, let's say, faces uh, or personal data about uh, people or conversation with them, travel history, um, even credit card numbers. Now, uh, the question, uh, the question uh, usually rotates around where and how this data will be stored and protected. So we are talking about privacy, about uh, data protection, and all, and, uh, all these uh, issues, which are very important and uh, really important, uh, but uh, they, are, they are also more general and they are not uh, tourism specific. They are valid for, uh, for, for, for every industry. Oh, uh, this needs to be done everywhere. However, when we talk about tourism context, we need to consider, in addition, some uh, so some different aspects, like, for example, uh, liabilities for damages caused by robots on tourist and employees. There should be insurances, so this also would need to be somehow uh, regulated. Um, if we go uh, from a financial uh, from a financial legislation perspective. Uh, in tourism, when companies start using a lot of uh, automation technologies, they decrease the use of uh, human labor. Well, for the moment, this is only comp this uh, the use of this automation is uh, uh, decreasing the demand for labor. It is just compensating the lack of employees. But at one point, probably it will it will go beyond this, and probably. Um, 
start significantly replacing even the employees who are currently working in the industry. You covered so many, so many topics uh, that I want to ask you uh, more specific questions. I prepared first the global report on use of AI by law firms. Uh, and we see that there are leaders, uh, huge companies and very small that are really keen on uh, using AI. But the middle-sized companies don't want or don't see the uh, the opportunities, or are not really interested to to use them. How how it looks in uh, in hospitality and tourism? Well, um, automa- in order to apply automation technologies, you need economies of scale. Now, if you have one small guest house with uh, ten rooms, then uh, it doesn't make sense to have a room service delivery robot. Uh Uh, self-checking kiosk or any other piece of uh, automation because practically the market positioning, the unique selling proposition of the the company, of uh, the guest house, will be completely different. It will be based on personalized service, providing authentic, humane experience. But if you have a large hotel or uh, with 500 rooms more, then it makes sense especially if this hotel is, uh, uh, is, is an urban one and uh, four or five stars. Because in that case, uh, uh, you will have sufficient number of orders that mm-hmm. will come for room service that will justify from economic point of view the use of room service delivery robots. Um, regarding other pieces of technologies like, for example, chatbots, uh, it's very easy to develop them and, it's not, and they are not so expensive. So this means that even very small companies with only a couple of employees can, can have their own chatbot without, uh, without any problems. Uh, however, for other, uh, for other software, for example, for revenue management or uh, more complex uh, uh, chatbots that are integrated with uh, large language models, you will need uh, much more um, turnover of the company. Online travel agencies, for example, they are very active in the use of, uh, uh, of, uh, of chatbots. Small companies, small hotels, uh, they start uh, using them. Kiosks, uh, they are mostly used by mid-sized, uh, large hotels, but also the category here is uh, very you mentioned some pro- legal problems uh, related to, to to robotics and automation. Uh, what I'm afraid of are consumer rights. Uh, I'm really afraid that my tickets, uh, due to AI that checks my website history, my cookies and so on, are much more expensive than my neighbor's ones uh, when we travel uh, together. Is it uh, a common fear uh, in, in economy uh, and in tourism? Uh, well, you, I, I think your uh, your fears are more or less justified okay. because it is very it is very easy to apply uh, in uh, in tourism cost context perfect price discrimination. This mm-hmm. means that every person to be able to pay the price that that uh, he or she is uh, uh, able to pay the highest price rather than the one he or she wants to. Pay. Uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this is more or less uh, forbidden in uh, many countries, especially in Bulgaria. Um, uh, product that are perceived as, as the same, they should have uh, the same price. But uh, uh, when we talk about tickets, there are many things that uh, uh, that per, uh, that influence the price. So it's not only your travel frequency, but also when you travel, when did you book, whether there will be other flights. Uh, in addition to this one, uh, whether it will be in the morning, in the afternoon, the whole demand, and etc. So there are many factors, although it is possible that there are different prices for different people. But sometimes this is not allowed. Uh, and the third uh, thing you mentioned is this uh, uh, replacement uh, of uh, employees replaced by, by robots. Uh, uh, in, in law, I... I often discuss it with uh, students that I teach and they are really afraid if, if they are really needed in uh, the closest future because AI replaces them. How, how it looks among uh, touristic employees? Yeah, here uh, I need to explain a little bit about, uh, about the different tasks in tourism. In tourism, we can divide the tasks into cognitive and physical. Cognitive, uh, mean, uh, for example, 
setting price, preparing an offer, or um, or developing a, a post for social media, something that is more creative and it's intellectual. Uh, on the other side, we have physical tasks. For example, cutting uh, uh, cutting the vegetables in the kitchen to prepare the salad, or moving items like for room service delivery or vacuum cleaning, uh, uh, cleaning etc. Um, if we look deeper into the into the characteristics of these tasks, we will see that the physical tasks inherently include also cognitive tasks. Now think about a room service delivery robot. It needs to go from point A to point B, but uh, th this is the physical tasks it, it needs to implement. But it also has significant cognitive component in this task. It needs to. Uh, uh, it needs to know where it is located in the premises of uh, the hotel. It needs to, it needs uh, uh, to uh, to be able to identify different objects on, on its uh, on its way to the uh, to the room. Um, to be able to change its trajectory based on uh, the, the obstacles on the path. To be able to co to connect with uh, the lift system of uh, the hotel in order to move across floors. To the telephone system of the hotel in order to um, uh, to uh, to inform uh, the guest that it is in front of the room, etc. Uh, also, uh, even even for room service delivery, you will need someone to take the order and put it in the container for the moment. Probably in ten years it will be different, but at least for the moment uh, this is the case. While other jobs that are more highly paid, they include mostly cognitive tasks that are easy to automate, uh, like for example for a reception. Or for marketing many uh, or for marketing managers, you ha you can have a software with uh, uh, with uh, AI for determining prices based on what is the current demand, what is the uh, uh, the number of uh, bookings uh, that the hotel has already received, what are the prices of uh, competitors. So different factors they can be considered, and the software can recommend the price. So uh, some jobs in tourism will definitely, if not disappear, they will significantly be reduced in terms of numbers. Uh, and these are those that include mostly cognitive tasks. Generative AI, for example, is a significant game changer. Uh, with uh, a colleague of uh, mine from Portugal, we, we made uh, uh, research about how can we use uh, a, uh, chat GPT in order to prepare a marketing strategy for a hotel. And chat GPT did it greatly. So, um, I think uh, that uh, in, in hospitality, in the future, uh, the entry-level jobs will probably uh, will probably continue to exist, but they will be, let's say, in housekeeping, uh, in maintenance. Someone will need to maintain the robots and the, the kiosks. Uh, uh, but uh, for receptionists, there will be fewer jobs. For marketers, there will be fewer jobs. Uh, so um, it will be it will be quite uh, different. It will be quite different. Also, Although also, I think that even for lawyers, even for lawyers, junior lawyers, they will not disappear because they will be, there's a little bit of hype uh, about what AI can do. But someone will need to check the relevance of what AI is creating and, uh, uh, and uh, the truthfulness of this because AI can hallucinate, can create things that are not correct. And uh, it's not, and its recommendations are not always transparent. And this will be a perfect job for junior lawyers. Yeah, I repeat it uh, every lecture I, I conduct, and uh, every time when when this question is asked. Uh, uh, one of my previous episodes was with David Gunkel, who who made a, 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 we we had a, a fantastic discussion on robot rights. I know that one of your uh, topics uh, of your interest uh, is robot uh, rights, uh, and you you did some research uh, together with David. Uh, can you elaborate a bit on on that uh, topic because it seems uh, very interesting? Yeah, uh, thank you for this. Um, we, with David, we made research about uh, uh, the perceptions of Bulgarians about robot rights. What we did, uh, we, we used his framework: can, cannot, should, should not have rights. Uh, and uh, but uh, instead of asking people whether robots can have should have rights, we uh, uh, as a as a total, we ask them on for uh, twenty six individual rights and obligations. 
because uh, because we thought that uh, um, not all rights are made equal. People may have support for some rights, but for other rights, they may not. Have. Mm-hmm. And, um, and and what to, uh, and also what we added was obligations because you may have rights, but uh, it, uh, the other side of the coin is uh, that. Uh, uh, entities, legal entities also have obligations, not always uh, rights. Bulgarians showed extremely high support for uh, ro- for robot obligations, like uh, that they should respect uh, human rights, even if these rights go beyond uh, uh, or go against uh, the robotic rights, or that uh, uh, that robots should adhere to all legal regulations, so that they should not break uh, any uh, any law. So these are uh, these are the obligations. But when it comes to but but when it comes to rights, uh, Bulgarians were much more skeptical. Uh, for example, uh, when we talked about political rights, like like uh, voting on elections or uh, being elected as a as a uh, for a public office, uh, Bulgarians consider that this is far fetched and that this should never be provided. But uh, also some other rights like uh, unionize or going on strike or own property, Bulgarians were also very skeptical. Uh, the greatest support for human for, for robotic rights was uh, that uh, they should uh, was about the right to receive maintenance, the right mm-hmm. uh, not to be abused. So, but if you see these rights to receive maintenance and not to be abused, these rights uh, uh, for robots practically reflect uh, people's desire that these robots be in good shape in order to fulfill their tasks. So here, again, we, we talk about human centrism rather than uh, uh, robotic centrism for, for these rights. We, we made the research with uh, three respondent groups. One is about uh, uh, people with uh, legal background. People, uh, the second group was with people with uh, a background in AI, robotics, and uh, IT technologies. And the third was uh, the third, third group who do not have any uh, legal background or IT background. And there were no differences between these groups. Oh. Although the people with legal background, they were more skeptical. Uh, the, those with uh, IT background, they were a little bit more enthusiastic than the general public. These differences were uh, uh, not statistically significant, and uh, also we, what we found is that uh, the public is uh, not quite ready, not only for the rights of uh, automation technologies, but also uh, for them it's difficult to distinguish whether robots can have rights per se as entities, and uh, whether they should be given some rights uh, based on uh, w- regardless whether they can or uh, or cannot have rights. So uh, they were perceiving the questions can and should as practically the same question. And what's your personal view on, on this topic? Are you a supporter of robot yeah. rights? Uh, or? Yeah, I am a supporter of uh, robot rights, but from a pragmatic point of view. So okay. probably not all rights, but rights that are necessary in order for the robots to function and to implement uh, all the tasks that they're entitled to do. Uh, but, uh, but if you look, uh, there are also organizations that have rights. Also, uh, mm-hmm. we, uh, and obligations, obviously. Uh, of all the organizations, they are uh, run by people. Uh, it is possible that uh, we can have uh, organizations without, uh, without employees. Although, uh, and uh, algorithmic management, automated decision making in the future will challenge this uh, decision making by human, uh, by human uh, board of directors. Um, so uh, I think that robots should be given some rights. Uh, for, uh, if you think pragmatically, uh, one mobile robot that does uh, delivery from a restaurant to the home and uh, needs to use uh, the sidewalks. So how do you treat it? Probably you will not say we give to these mobile robots the same rights as pedestrians, but you will formulate it in a slightly different way, like uh, uh, mobile robots uh, that operate, uh, that uh, use the sidewalks will be treated as pedestrians. So you don't say that they have rights, but 
in practice, you will treat them as they have rights. I fully agree because without such the rights of, let's say, free movement of, of the yeah. robot moving in the sidewalk, you cannot have yeah. uh, liability related to when it yeah. breaches uh, the, the, the rules. It's great you, you could join me. Thank you for this discussion. And uh, you guys uh, see my next episode. Uh, watch, watch all the episodes. And uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.